In 2022, Sight and Sound magazine released its widely followed list of the best movies of all time. Every 10 years, Sight and Sound polls directors and film critics across the globe for movies they deem the best of all time. On the 2022 list, over 1,600 people contributed their list. And yet, only one Spanish language movie made the final list, the wonderful and influential The Spirit of the Beehive, directed by Victor Irise. It's something that feels weird to me personally because I became a movie lover as some of the greatest movies coming out came from countries like Mexico, Spain, Argentina, and Chile. As a counter to sight and sound in, in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, I would like to share some of my favorite Spanish language movies from that time. First, some context. These movies came out as many Spanish and Latin American dictatorships during the Cold War transition to democracies. After fascist leader Francisco Franco's death, Spain became a constitutional monarchy. In Chile, the people voted Augusto Pinochet out in 1988. Mexico, a country that cracked down on leftist protesters in the 1960s and 1970s, as depicted in movies like Canoa, A Shameful Memory, and later Roma, transitioned away from the single party rule of the PRI. During the 1990s and the 2000s, more stories emerged from these countries, transitioning in their governments. Resistance, politically and personally, served as a through line for so many of these movies. Many of these filmmakers were influenced by the irreverent and perpetually exiled Spanish filmmaker Luis Buñuel. Buñuel started making surrealist short films in the 1920s alongside Spanish artists like Salvador Dali and poet Federico García Lorca. Once Franco took over in Spain, and after many artists fled or like Lorca were murdered, Buñuel worked in Mexico during a period known as Mexico's golden age of cinema. Buñuel's films moved away from surrealism during this period and more towards realism and depicting poverty and social inequities, such as the acclaimed film Los Ovidados. Filmmaker Guillermo del Toro put Buñuel's film on his 2012 sight and sound list. Buñuel's film influenced Guillermo del Toro's movie The Devil's Backbone. Early in his career, Del Toro completed Backbone, a ghost story set in an orphanage in rural Spain during the Civil War. The incoming victory of the fascist looms in the minds of the adults taking care of kids orphaned by the war. Despite the sense of inevitable oppression, Del Toro gives us characters who refuse to degrade their humanity and who act knowing that everyone will become a ghost. No oppressor can conquer death in the end. The film works as part of an informal trilogy of movies that begins with 1993's Kronos and ends with 2006's Pan's Labyrinth. When Del Toro made his debut with Kronos, another Mexican movie dealing with the past came out, like Water for Chocolate, based on the magic realism novel by Laura Esquivel and directed by Alfonso Aral, a lush historical drama punctuated with embellished realism. When protagonist Tita cooks, she communicates her feelings. Tita falls in love with a man, but in her family, she has to follow the rules and serve as the spinster for her mother and family. When the man marries her sister instead, Tita bakes the wedding cake with her tears, which prompts everyone to feel her sadness. This movie who seems disconnected from the irreverent cinema of Buñuel or the dark fantasy of Del Toro, Tita's tale is a tale of resistance towards societal norms expected of her with the backdrop of the Mexican Revolution. Social resistance is an important theme in the work of Spanish director Pedro Almodovar. Almodovar, an LGBT filmmaker, lived through fascist Spain and found inspiration in American melodramas like All About Eve. His characters do not live in a closet. They live vividly and expressly with the challenges of doing so. Almodovar's films were the first films I saw with trans and LGBT characters treated as individuals with their own complicated lives. Almodovar's films are testaments to resistance through living out and through empathy. Talk to Her, the 2002 rated hard R movie, is about a man whose matador wife falls under a coma. This man meets a nurse and creates a friendship, but the nurse emerges as a darker character who commits a terrible crime. Yet the man remains the nurse's friend even during incarceration. It's a movie about how vital empathy is to resisting an erasure of basic humanity. Through these characters, we explore a spectrum of empathy, not only for people we come to like, but for people we don't like, so, such as criminals. Chilean filmmaker Sebastian Lelio shares Almodovar's focus in depicting the lives of people who resist through living and breathing. 
Leo won the 2017 Best International Feature Film Oscar for A Fantastic Woman, about grief, exclusion, and resilience star and trans actress Daniela Vega. His breakthrough in my recommendation, however, was the Chilean film Gloria, starring Parlina Garcia. Gloria is about an older woman that refuses to not live. In the movie, we follow Gloria as she completes yoga, as she goes to disco clubs and dances, and as she goes out ready to meet someone new. Her age is a number, not a limit. We watch her fall in love with a guy, and we watch her struggle with a desire to have love in her life, but to keep her independence in a life that she worked and struggled to have. Finally, let me recommend the wild, sometimes violent, and often hilarious Wild Tales. Wild Tales is an Argentine anthology film from director Damian Zefron. Each short in the anthology film relates to revenge and the characters exacting revenge against injustice. Yet we also bear witness to the extremes of reckoning with injustice in shorts about a bride confronting her cheating groom or a demolitions expert exacting justice for having his car towed. Wild Tale shows how humiliating injustice in daily life can feel, but also how complicated justice becomes when it becomes a reality. These films barely scratch the surface of Hispanic cinema during this time. There's so many great films coming from Spanish language countries and filmmakers. For Hispanic Heritage Month, I encourage you to check out these films that may seem different but speak vividly to our life experiences. <laughs>